I was traveling down I-94, heading towards Lawton, uh, heading toward Pawpaw, going to get off at Pawpaw Exit one winter, a couple of years back, three, four years ago, and um, the snow had just came fresh that that night, and and uh, no, and uh, there was wind was blowing, and the snow was all the way across 94, and I had to go in the dark and get on 94. I had to be to work in Lawton at six o'clock in the morning, and in the process, um, I had. Uh, couldn't see well, but I, I knew that was the only way I was going to get to work on time was to get on that 94. So when I got on I-94, I started traveling uh, east, and it wasn't long until I seen a set of lights uh, ahead of me, and I thought, man, they're coming up on me pretty quick. And then I realized it was a semi-truck, and he had pulled off to the side, and I went on around him. And then I kept on traveling. I wanted to go faster, but, uh, fast enough that nobody would come in behind me and run into me, but yet I wanted to, didn't want to go so fast that I couldn't stop if someone was to stop in front of me. Right, right. And I had all kinds of inkling to stop, but I was afraid to because I couldn't see ahead of me and I couldn't see behind me. Right. So I just kept traveling. It wasn't long, somewhere between Hartford and Lawrence, I saw another set of taillights. And I thought, there's a semi ahead of me. And he's also pulled over. So I, I went around him again. This time I realized, uh-oh, he's not off to the side. He's over towards the, the cable. And he's sitting this way in the road. And I went this side, and now there's a little distance between the cable and the front of his truck. And I know there's not enough room for my car to fit through there. Right. But I don't have enough room with the conditions of the road to try to reverse my move and go around him to the right. right. So I tried to slow down the best that I could, but I knew that he was funneling me towards those cables. Now there was snow on the side of the road, I grant you, that had been plowed up about two foot, maybe three foot deep right. before I got to the cables, maybe within 10 or 12 inches of the cable where they'd been plowing. Right. I saw the front of the truck, I'm, I'm past the trailer, I'm going down towards the front of the truck. I'm going to hit that truck right. right about somewhere the front wheel, or I'm going to have to slam into them cables and hit both of them. Right. So I just took my hands and put them on the wheel. I said, God help me. Right. Have mercy. Yeah. And whatever the case may have been. Right. And now somehow or another, my car fit between that snowbank and the front of that truck without hitting either one of them Amen. and I come out the other side <laughs> and I could not believe how I got out yeah. the other side. Yeah. Yeah. I know what it was. God had mercy on me. Yeah. Yeah. God took that semi truck and pushed it out of the way and allowed me enough room to get by Amen. because I called upon his name. Amen. Yeah. I'm glad today that we have a God that answers prayer when we call upon his name. Yeah. We get ourselves into some trouble sometimes and we get ourselves in some pretty bad uh, predicaments and we don't know how we're going to get out of them. Amen. So we call on the name of the Lord and when we do, he helps us out. Amen. Here in the book of Jonah, uh, the scripture said in verse 8, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. There's a lot of people today, and, and brother uh, Jason, I thank you for the message this morning in Sunday school. It helped me decide which way I was going to go in this sermon today because I wasn't real sure until I began to say, well, that's the way the Lord's leading. Right. Mercy. You know, mercy is something that we use uh, all the time. We say, have mercy on me. Yes. Amen. And it's important. That's a very good thing to do is to call out to God for mercy because he does have mercy on Amen. us when we ask him to. Have you ever been in the place where you needed God's mercy? Yeah. Even if you'd say no, it's not true. Amen. Yeah. Maybe if you right. say no, uh, you're going to find that there'll be a time when you'll need the mercy of God. Oh, we get ourselves in some trouble sometimes, don't we? Right. I'm glad that God has a way of getting us out of it. Amen. Amen. Now, there was a man, and he was a salesman, and he traveled the country over. And he went into this town one night, and, uh, and he wasn't a bad guy. He was a pretty good guy to speak of. Uh, but he, instead of serving God, as we know God, instead of letting Jesus be Lord in his life, he had his own God. His own God's name was Fuji. You know, you know, if you've got a God named Fuji, uh -huh. amen, that, that's, that's something like a pet, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Might about what it was, I guess. 
But anyway, he got into this, uh, uh, got off the, uh, the uh, highway and got him a hotel room. He went into the room and opened up his bags and he pulled out his clothes and put them on where they were supposed to go at and, and then he took Fuji out of, the, out of the suitcase and he sets him over on the nightstand and, and he went on about what he had to do and he came home that night and on his way home he heard some singing before he got home and uh, they was having church down in a storefront building someplace like Full Gospel Christian Tabernacle. Yeah. They were, they, were there, they were in there singing and praising the Lord. They said they sounded so happy, he thought he would go in. Right. So he went in, and the Spirit of God began to deal with his heart. What long until he went forward to an altar, received Christ as his Savior. Oh, he was so happy. He uh -huh. went on home. Right. And as he opened the door to his hotel room, he looked over on that nightstand, and Fuji was laying over on his side. Right. He said, Fuji, what happened to you? He raised him back up, and he sets him up. He said, Fuji, he said, tonight, he said, I met Jesus Christ as my Savior. He said, and I won't need you anymore. Right. He said, Fuji, every time you fall down, he said, I've got to pick you up. Right. Fuji, he said, every time you get dirty, I've got to dust you off. Right. He said, I've got a God now, when I fall down, he picks me up. Oh, yeah. 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 I've got a God now that when I get dirty and dusty, yeah. he washes me off. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, this is the Christ that I'm talking to you about today. He's the one, amen, that we don't serve to forsake our mercy. He's the one that we serve that when we call upon him for mercy, he's there to give it to us. Amen. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. The story was told about Jonah. Amen. Jonah was a man who was given an opportunity, uh, given a call by God to go to Nineveh and to preach the gospel, but he didn't want to do it because he didn't like the Ninevites. Right. They were a Syrian group and they were bloodthirsty. They killed everybody that they could kill, men, women, and children, and they done it because they loved to kill. They loved to, to shed innocent blood. Jonah knew that. And he said, and I know who God is. He said, if I go down to Nineveh and preach the gospel, amen, to those Assyrian people, they're going to receive the gospel, they're going to repent of their sins, and God's going to forgive them. He said, and I don't like them. Right. So I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Has God ever called you to do something and you decide you're not going to do it? Yeah, come on. I'll tell you what, he knows where you live at. Amen. He knows, <laughs> uh, amen, yes, your address. Yes, sir. He knows your phone number. He sure does. He knows what you're thinking about right now. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. He knows who you are in your heart, and he knows how to get your attention amen, if brother. he wants to. Right. right. Jonah said, I'm not going. God said, go down to Nineveh and preach the gospel. Jonah went and got him a bus ticket. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> got him a, 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 he went and paid the fare. Yeah. And he got on a ship to Tarsus in a different direction. Right. He ran from the presence of God. I tell you what, if God tells us to do something, we simply got to say, Lord, you know what's best. I'll do it. Amen. Boy, that's tough, isn't it? Amen. Man, I tell you, what if God wanted us to do something we didn't want to do? Right. Yeah. Like preach the gospel. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess we just had to do it. Yeah. What God told us he wanted us to serve him. I guess we would just have to do it. Amen. Right. That's right, because then when I got myself in trouble, I could call upon the name of the Lord yeah. and his mercy would be there for me. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what mercy is? Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. <laughs> you know what grace is? Grace is God giving us something that we don't deserve. Right. But I thank God for mercy, and I thank God for grace. Yes. Here he said, they that observe lying vanities, that old Fuji was a God that was a liar. He was just dead. He had ears, but he couldn't hear. He had eyes, but he couldn't see. Right. Amen. He was considered a God. His name was Fuji, but he was made by human hands. Right. But we serve a God that's not made by human hands. We serve a God that made human hands. Amen. We serve the Creator. Amen. And we understand that we are not the Creator. Yeah. We understand that we are the creature that the Creator has created. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Amen. God makes us what we are. God sees who we are. God knows who we are. Yep. And God loves you very, very much today. Amen. Hallelujah. What a God that we serve. Amen. Jonah went down to, uh, to, uh, to Joppa rather than going even to Nineveh. 
He ran from the presence of God. Do you know what happened to Jonah when he began to run? He went down. He went down to Joppa. He got on the ship. He went down into the belly of the ship. Amen. He went out into the ocean. On his journey, a storm came. And when the storm came, amen, they found out what the problem was. They threw him overboard. Uh, a big fish, according to the New Testament, a whale, according to the Old Testament, came along and swallowed him. And then he went down into the whale's belly. Right. And then the whale took him down to the bottom of the mountains and the bottom of the ocean. And when he began to run from the presence of God, he went everywhere but up. Amen. He went down. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, and even the Bible recorded that in hell, he prayed. You see, Jonah was an example of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died three days and three nights he was dead. Yeah. If, if Jonah was an example of three days and three nights of Jesus being dead and raising from the dead, amen, now I'll tell you what, Good Friday should have happened on Good Wednesday. Amen. <laughs> yeah, come on. I'll preach that another day. <laughs> but listen to this. If he's an example of Jesus and Jesus was telling the truth, Jonah was not only in the bottom of the ocean, in the bottom of the mountain, in the bottom of whale's belly, but he was dead and in hell. Amen. But somehow or another he prayed and God got him up, raised him up, amen, and then the whale took him up and he brought him up to the top of the, of the water and he spewed him out on the land. And at this point in time, Jonah decided it was time for him to obey God. Amen. And he began to go into Nineveh, a day and a half's journey. Nineveh was a city. It was a place where uh, hundreds of thousands of people were living. And he went into the middle of this city right. and he began to proclaim that God was going to send judgment upon Nineveh if they didn't repent. Right. Isn't that something? How a backslidden preacher will even make a whale sick. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. The whale vomited him out. Yes, he couldn't even keep it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if God wants you to go to Nineveh, you go to Nineveh. Right. God's ready for you to get saved. I'll tell you what, it's time for us to surrender our lives to him and say, yes, Lord, here am I. You're the only one that has the words of eternal life. And I come to you because I believe that you are God and that you're the one that's going to take care of me. Now, oh boy, um, there's not enough time in the, in the day for me to preach this message and do it justice. But I'm going to do the best I can in a little while. Amen. Preach, brother. The people of Nineveh believed God and what a beautiful thing it was. Amen. Now, uh, I believe it's one of the most remarkable statements of the whole book of Jonah was the people of Nineveh believed God. People like to remember uh, this, uh, this whale that swallowed Jonah. And they said that was, that was the story, the whale swallowed Jonah. I think the greater story is that the people of Nineveh believed God and were saved. 120,000 people even give their life to God because God was going to bring judgment upon them. That's important. Yeah. That's newsworthy. Amen. But I'll tell you what, it would never make Channel 22 News. Huh? Sir. Amen. Someone said, uh, there's no news at all. Yeah, you don't make the news when a dog bites a man. It's normal. Right. It don't make the news when a, uh, when a uh, man bites a dog. Now that might make the news. Right. <laughs> well, what about when a fish eats a man? That might make the news too. Right. I'm my wife and we've been enjoying this show. We've been watching on some channel. Uh, I'm not sure what the channel is that we're watching, uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a, all new to me. It's different than most television that I've ever seen, but it's uh, I Am Pray, I Was Pray, is the name of the show. Have you ever watched it? I Was Pray. Talk about these sharks and uh, these people out swimming in the ocean, and now uh, this day, and the shark comes up and bites them, blood's in the water, how many know when blood's in the water, all the sharks want to come in and eat you? Right. Hey, but I, I don't know why they want to swim in the ocean. Now that got me out of the, out of the notion. <laughs> So they said, well, a lot of them went out in the woods and they were camping in the woods and a bear come along and, and uh, decided he was hungry. Uh -huh. I'll tell you, here's an eight-foot grizzly bear 
He weighs probably six, seven hundred pounds. Amen. He's got a mouth big enough to put your head in it and to shake you like a rag doll. Right. <laughs> Amen. I tell you what, I'm not, I'm not wanting a bear to shake me. I don't want to become right. prey. Amen. But Jonah became prey and when this whale, that when they threw him overboard, the whale come along and swallowed him. Right. And it made the news. Right. Well, you know, it shouldn't be making any news. All you got to do is have a small enough man and a big enough fish, and the job gets done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what should have made the news is the fact that 120,000 stubborn yeah. people yeah. who want to live their own life and do their own thing repented of their sin at one time Amen. and gave their life to God, and God brought revival to Nineveh just like He wanted to through a man that He had to bring from the and even hell itself and bring him up to the place where amen, he would obey God. Amen. Man, God must have wanted him awfully bad because yes, there were a lot of them he left in hell. Uh, yes, sir. Now, preacher, what do you want to tell stories like that for? Well, I'm just going to take you to the Bible and we'll see. Okay. How's that? Right. We're going to go over to the book of Matthew, Gospel chapter 12, and we're going to begin reading with uh, we'll read, read uh, 30 uh, 37, 38. Let, let's start with 37 and we'll go from there. It said, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You think if God's going to justify me by my words and condemn me because of my words, even that he would not uh, by his own words be justified, yeah. and if he was to tell a lie by his own words be condemned? Right. Well, yes, he would. Yeah. But see, God doesn't have to lie because he's the one that wrote the book and told the story. Right. Now, in the book of Jonah, it talked about, uh, about this. And uh, here in the book of Matthew, Jesus is telling about it uh, here again. Verse 38. Then certain of the, of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Everybody today wants God to give them a sign. Right. Yes. I'll tell you what, uh, someone said, uh, I would do something for God, but I'm waiting for him to give me a sign. Have you ever read that bulletin out there, that one uh, uh, out there on the bulletin board? If you're waiting for a sign, here's your sign. Even this sign on the bulletin board says, go to work for God. Maybe you might want to work in the junior church. They may need a little help. Amen, brother. Amen. Maybe you want to be an usher. Amen. They might need some yep. help, too. Absolutely. Right? What if, uh, if there was a position open to clean the toilets? Amen. Maybe that job would be done too. Right. Well, we think that we're too good to do the little things and the hard things. Amen. If we'll be faithful to those things, God will call us to do anything. Amen. We'll become his servant. Right. Anyway, uh, that was free. Okay. Verse 39 said, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Amen. I said, Man, we need someone to teach Sunday school. And someone said, I'll pray about it. Well, uh, Sunday's coming. Uh -huh. Amen. You're a Christian. Amen. Maybe you ought to say, yes, I'll try it. Right. Yep. Amen. When, when you Amen. do, God will pick you up on that, and he'll do it. You know, I stood behind the pulpit, uh, age 18 years old, 19 almost, maybe 19 at the time. Amen. But I stood behind the pulpit. No, church wasn't going on that day, but I was standing there behind the pulpit like the pastor did on Sunday. Uh -huh. And I thought to myself, you know what? Lord, I believe I could preach this gospel. Uh -huh. You know what God did? Uh-huh. God woke me up and he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The very thing that I was playing with or toying with, amen, God took it serious and he said, I'll call you to preach the gospel. He put it in my heart. Go into all the world and yeah. preach the gospel amen. unto every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. God set the judgment. It's not me. I just tell right. people you need Christ and you need him now, even though you might not realize it. Amen. Come on. What I'm here to say. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. What was the sign of the prophet Jonas? Prophet Jonas died, and in three days and three nights he stayed in hell, or he stayed in, in the bowels of this fish. Amen. And, and then he rose again. Jesus Christ went to the cross. He died, and for three days and three nights he stayed, amen, dead until he rose again three days later. Amen. Three amen. literal days later. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. <coughs> if Jonah was a sign of Jesus dying on the cross, even if it wasn't three days and three nights, 
Amen. Then God, the Lord Jesus, lied here in the scripture. Amen. He didn't lie. Amen. He said, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Amen. What was the heart of the earth? Every time we fear, hear reference to hell in the Bible, they talked about it being down. Yeah. Somewhere down in the bottom of the earth somewhere. Well, what a terrible thing that is. Yeah. Now this fish. How big could a fish have to be to swallow a man? I like to fish, but I've never caught one that big. <laughs> and every time I thought I hooked one that big, they broke the line. Uh -huh. <laughs> never got a chance even to see them. But there were some baleen whales, and they get up to be 100 feet long and 40 feet around. They weigh over 300,000 pounds, 150 tons. I believe that thing could swallow a man and his house. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you to. Amen. Yeah. Mediterranean fish was recently caught and exhibited in Beirut, uh, which had a head that weighed six tons. That's a big fish. That's a head. Yeah. Wow. A man standing on the lower jaw could uh, not reach the upper jaw. That's a big fish. The opening being about eight feet across, I believe that fish could swallow a man. Yes, sir. There was a pure fish that was caught off the coast of Florida. And it, and, uh, and, uh, he said it, uh, a pure fish was caught off the, uh, the Florida coast that weighed 30,000 pounds. It was 45 feet long and 8 feet thick, and it had a 1,500-pound fish in its stomach besides a large octopus. Wow. Wow. Now, a man could easily stand in its mouth or in its stomach, and it could have swallowed 10 Jonas yeah. and not been full. You see, all he had to have was a big fish and a small man. That job's done. Why don't professors make fun of 120,000 men with their attitudes changed from the gospel right. being preached by a man that had been uh, uh, darkened uh, even by the acids that was in the, uh, the stomach of a whale that was puked up on the land and that came into the city a, a day and a half journey before he began to preach. I heard someone tell me one time, I wanted to preach in the tavern, but I knew if I started preaching at the front door, I'd never make it to the first seat, and they'd throw me out. Mm -hmm. So I walked all the way to the back of the place, <laughs> and then I began to preach, and as they would throw me out, I preached all the way to the front door. <laughs> God tells us in the scripture, amen, that they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Amen. amen, if we follow after idols and we worship idols and we put money and everything else ahead of God, amen, when it all comes down, amen, we've, we've failed. And what a, what a terrible failure it is. I read this morning about, a, a, oh gee, if I can, if I can locate it, I, I was... I had so many markers in here and uh, things that I wanted to, wanted to read. Amen. I, so I'm probably going to I'm probably going to dance around and not find it. Amen. But uh, I tell you what, if we if we have everything and and, and don't have Jesus, we have nothing. Right. One fellow said, "If I have Jesus only, I'm safe right. for eternity. Yeah. But if I have everything else without Him, I am lost." Yeah. I was uh, pastoring. Uh, and getting ready to open up a, a brand new church auditorium that seat, seated 300 people. And uh, we just just finished building it. First service was there, people invited their friends and oh, we put advertisements on the news and we invited people to come out and to see this new sanctuary. Beautiful, beautiful, high ceiling, cathedral ceilings, and on and on. Um, boy, it was, it was, it was something. There's a couple of people though that caught me off to the side and they told me, but Tom, I've got some friends that's coming from down in Tennessee that will be here for opening service. I don't want you to preach too hard. I don't like people telling me what I can preach, what I can preach. Amen, brother. Amen. Come on. 
I took a sermon that morning. Uh -huh. What would you give in exchange for your soul? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You can have it all without Jesus and be lost when it comes time to die and spend forever in hell. Yep. Amen. Hell hot. Yes, uh -huh. Torments there. Yeah. My, I don't want to go there. No, sir. Amen. And I don't want you to go there either. Amen. But God put that message on me for that Sunday morning. Uh -huh. And I told the people I'd rather have 15. Yep. And I'd rather attend church in a barn where I could throw a cat through the holes yes, in the wall. And have 15 people that wanted to serve the Lord with me. Amen. That yes, I wouldn't have had a whole church full. Amen. Filled and packed the auditorium. 300 plus. Amen. So if they didn't love God. Amen. And they didn't love me. Yes, sir. Amen. I'll tell you what, I'm glad that God loves me. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. And God loves you. God loved Jonah. Amen. God called Jonah. And God loved the people of Nineveh, even though they killed men, women, and children, and they were noted for it. It was their reputation. Yeah. But the gospel went in there, and they repented, and they turned their life over to God, and God cared so much for them yes. that he forgave them and turned judgment away from them. Praise the Lord. Mm. Jonah hated that. Even though he knew what he had to do, he did what he had to do after a while. Right. Even though he ran from the presence of God, he, after a while he said yes. Right. He did what he was supposed to do. Amen. God put him outside the city and a gourd began to grow. Amen. And then the, the vines grew up over the place where he was at and a gourd was there. It came up in a day. The sun came out real high and the gourd died and the branches died and the limbs died and the leaves dried up. And Jonah felt more concerned about the fact that that gourd was dried up than he did about the 120,000 men that would have died and went to hell if the gospel hadn't been preached to them. Sometimes we get our values mixed up. Yep. Yeah. What counts in this life is whether Christ lives in our heart. Yes. Jesus said to a, to a Pharisee that came to him by night in the third chapter of John, Nicodemus said to, uh, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen. You see, there's not too many places in the Bible you're going to find the word must. Right. Amen. Uh, but there it is. Yeah. You'll find it again in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. He said, There's no other name given among men whereby a man must be saved yeah. than the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I, this message, I could break down this, this word, how do you put it? Vanity. And we could preach there for a long time. I might, might preach that next Sunday. I don't know. But I'm going to stop right here and say this. God loves you. Jesus died in your place. Yep. The Bible talked about Christ and he said, this man. Talking about Jesus. This man. After he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. You know why he sat down? Someone said he was tired. No, he wasn't tired. He was finished. Sin's penalty had been paid for. Men now have the right to be forgiven. And he sat down at the right hand of God after he had gave his life's blood on the cross of Calvary. Amen. God accepted his sacrifice. Amen. It was proven in the fact that he rose from the dead three days later just like he said he would. Just like the sign of the prophet Jonah. Here he rose from the dead. He went back to the Father and sat at the Father's right hand. And he prayed to the Father that the Father would send another comforter. Even because of the church that was at, on earth that needed help. And God sent the Holy Ghost. That he would live in us. That he would reprove us of judgment and sin and righteousness. All that he would teach us the things that we need to be taught. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time that we have to be together. I thank you for, uh, for 